Hey, 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 everyone. It's your girl, Sherelle. I'm the host of Let's Talk, the show, and this ain't a podcast. Thank you guys for tuning in this Tuesday like you guys do every Tuesday. We got a special episode in store. Tonight, we're talking toxicity. That's right. So grab your toxic-ass friends and your toxic-ass and tune in. We got an amazing show in store for you tonight. Okay, there we go. That looks a lot better. It's like super, super duper bright. Okay, and while you guys come in, I'm going to go ahead and grab my water because I'm super thirsty. Okay, so I feel like tonight's episode was really, I don't know if you guys can see Black Love is Power. This, uh, let's see. Okay, so yeah, I needed to go ahead Okay, so I wear my Black Love is Power shirt because it is important to represent. We see so much bullshit being glorified in social media, throughout the news, and it's just like, I'm tired of y'all. I don't, y'all know this show is not no gossipy ass show. I don't like doing shows that, you know, I don't, I'm just not no gossipy ass show. This ain't that. We're going to talk about some real shit and we're going to focus on shit that's going to make us better people, better people to our friends, better family members, and better community members because there's enough bullshit going around. You all can read that bullshit on the shade room, okay? Y'all ain't gonna come to my show with that shit, all right? So, tonight, y'all, how y'all doing? Um, I'm jumping all in. You know what? Let me, I'm sorry, y'all. I'm getting all out of pocket. I got a lot on my mind. So, um, you know, I got to kick off the show with something that I'm grateful for. I see you guys joining in. If you're just joining, make sure you drop in the comment section something that you're grateful for. Um, I almost didn't say what I'm grateful for. So I will say tonight I'm grateful for, or today I'm grateful for, um, today I'm grateful, today I'm grateful for, uh, yeah, I'm gonna go with yours. Today, I'm grateful for life. Um, I was involved in an accident yesterday. Um, and I think at this point, like, my car is like a total loss. So, um, I'm grateful that, you know, I didn't die. And, I'm, you know, I'm just grateful that I'm still here today. Mama. Okay, baby, you have to leave. Okay, you have to turn that down. Okay, I'm sorry about that, guys. So, yeah, I was involved in an accident yesterday. My car is like a total loss, but um, it really could have been a lot worse. Um, something like I was driving without my seatbelt on, and I was, you know, I, and I do it. I'm, I'm, a, I'm guilty. I do it now, so I'll drive a second without my seatbelt on. And, like, just moments before my car got hit, I was like, damn, let me put my seatbelt on. Um, literally, I said it out loud, like, damn, let me put my seatbelt on. Put my seatbelt on. Maybe 15 seconds later, I, I was, you know, spinning in the middle of the road. Um, so, um, also, the impact was, like, that, like, far away, like, from my door. It hit behind my, what's the name, door. So, um, it was that far away. If not, then my door probably would have been smashed in. And who knows if I would have been able to get out on my own. I was able to get up and walk away. Um, I got some soreness, and that's about it. So, um yeah so i'm just grateful that i'm okay i'm grateful that my son was not in the car um because if i wasn't dead i'd be in jail for assault um so yeah i'm just grateful for life today um but we're gonna jump right into it because we got a great episode um in store for you guys to see you join in we are talking toxicity okay y'all oh lord okay i know if you guys have seen i've been posting the video of ari saying that she wants a man to pull a gun on her i think that's how it is she wants a man to pull a gun on her and to make her stay because she's toxic where she packs up and leaves and stuff so first off i want to say let me say this romanticizing toxicity is is like the it's like the same way how people think love is all flowers and it's happiness and it's never a bad moment and that it doesn't get ugly sometimes and and it really romanticizing things oftentimes creates unrealistic expectations of whatever you're romanticizing. So people are romanticizing toxicity and this is creating this illusion that this person really loves you, this person cares about you and that 
I don't know, and that it's actually okay and it's all good and it's normal and it's not the case. I really feel like I just drew a blank trying to really explain that. Um, some toxic things, I know you guys saw the flyer, some toxic things a person will say um, from a woman is that um, you ain't gonna never find another woman like me. The same for a man, you ain't gonna never find a nigga like me. Um, I need a man who can handle me. Um, toxic things. Let me see. What else is toxic, y'all? I'll be, be trying not to live a toxic life. So, I'll be doing my hardest to avoid it and to stay away from it. So, toxic be like, like Ari said, I want a nigga to pull a gun out on me and make me stay. Toxic is, um, toxic is packing all your shit, pretending to leave and, and you never planned on going anywhere. Toxic is purposely ignoring people and being like here you go toxicity blocking somebody that's some toxic shit blocking him and if he call from a private number it's like you don't know how to communicate as an adult so those are like some toxic things i gave you what romanticizing romanticizing toxicity is i gave you some examples of some toxic behavior and i want to tell you why is this a problem we are glorifying doing you know what? Let me say this. Simba made a song that said niggas love doing shit they don't condone. And that is the prime example there. You love people are romanticizing this toxicity and they doing shit that they don't condone. You know what I'm saying? When it's done to them, the shit was on the other foot. I can't believe you would act like that. Like no person in their right as mine wants a gun to be pulled on them. That is not healthy. And all this romanticizing toxicity and all these toxic behaviors and toxic relationships are really detrimental to the view that the youth have on dating, love, relationships, black love. Okay, you have to go sit down. No. Okay, go sit down and watch TV. Okay, whatever. Um, so romanticizing toxicity is not only detrimental to our own views and our own health, it is really damaging when we're promoting this type of behavior to the youth. As an adult, you should want to communicate and you should want to have a peaceful house like you should want to be somewhere comfortable and if you can't get that by all means don't leave but see if it's something that maybe can be fixed and let me tell you everything cannot fucking be fixed people and let me say this toxic people do not love you okay he do love me mm, do toxic people love you they may love you let me take that back Tox a toxic person may love you may they they may not know how to express it appropriately and you need to be able to draw the line between that because it might be your time to go. Toxicity, let me tell you, you can leave. Sometimes you can leave a relationship. Sometimes you're going to leave in handcuffs. And then other times you're going to leave in a body bag. Pulling a gun out, whether it's a man or a woman, on their spouse to make them stay or to keep them in line, that shit is abuse. Let's start there. And it's not healthy. Um, It's... This toxicity is, I don't even, I really wish I could remember like an older way to explain this because it's really like glor just glorifying bullshit. Glorifying this bullshit and is is damaging us. Like that Justin LeBoy page, I think that's his, I think that's it, Justin LeBoy, that page, toxic all day. Nothing but bad behavior, making light of the situation, and just basically saying that, like, it's okay to act like a crappy person. Just don't tolerate nobody else being a crappy person to you. You literally have to be the person you want to date. It's not enough to say, I deserve this. Like, some people don't deserve shit. Like, I'm sorry. Everybody's not a fucking good person. They're just not. And it ain't just, you know, it ain't just the rapists and the murderers and the pedophile. Like, some of y'all don't do none of that shit and you're still not a good-ass person. Just like, just because you didn't cheat don't mean you didn't neglect your, your spouse and your relationship. Glorifying it. Let me tell you this. I think that some of y'all that say, oh, I'm just a petty person. I miss pettiness. That shit is misery. You too damn old to be acting like that. Granted, I understand that. Uh, age does not equal maturity, but you too fucking old to be so fucking childish and petty. That shit is disguised. That's just misery disguises pettiness. And and taking that type of shit into your relationship, into your friendships, is is 
is no fucking good for you. Y'all cannot live your life off these Justin La fucking boy memes. Like y'all living your life off, y'all basing your friendships, your relationships off that shit. And that's why shit is going down the drain for you. Ain't nothing working out because it only tells you one side. It always makes you look like you're the hero and somebody else is the villain. Fuck that. Sometimes you the villain in somebody's story. Sometimes you fucked up. Sometimes the shit you do is you can't return from. And that's the reality. But they don't tell you that. Sometimes that toxic shit is going to ruin your life. That toxic shit will make you lose a job. It will send you to jail. It will put you in the grave. And we're glorifying this to our little brothers and our little sisters and our little cousins. And now we got little boys thinking that they got to disrespect women all the fucking time. Not that hip-hop alone I ain't teaching them that. But I'm just saying that these habits are being glorified through our social media and we're sharing it. And it's like, it's bleeding onto them. And they're picking up these habits. We got, we're trying to teach our girls. I don't even know if we're still teaching girls this. We're trying to teach girls to value their bodies. You don't need to have a fat ass. You don't need to have big old boobies. You don't need a BBL and a fucking breast lift at fucking 19. Like, I don't know. You don't need that shit. We're trying to tell them that. You don't need that. Don't be like this. But yet, we're showing the women that do this. And we're telling them, be a good woman. Be like this and do the good things. But yet, we're going fine not answering the phone call, blocking him from every number, expecting him to call from a different number. And it's just like, not that that's like the epitome of toxicity, but it's like, y'all, I almost feel like sometimes toxicity is purposely doing the wrong thing just to get a rise out of somebody. And I, I want you to know that you're going to come and get, you're going to try to get the rise, you're going to get the rise out of two people. You're going to try the wrong motherfucker, and you're going to get more than a rise. You're going to get a whole ass wave out of a person. And then you're going to try the right person. And the right person gonna walk away from your stupid ass. Just like I'm not. Ari says a good thing in that in that video. Shh. Mama. Shh. Can you go get on the car? Can you get on the bed, please? Thank you. Shh. Mommy's working. Um. Just Ari made a very good point in that video. She said that money back yo makes her feel like how fucking old are you? Sometimes grow the fuck up. That's a very good point because he's a grown ass man who wanna keep dealing with some childish ass person, Pe doing petty shit, purposely doing petty shit. And it's like, y'all so used to shit going wrong, going south, and bad shit. Like, you don't know when you got something good. I don't know, y'all. I don't know. Honestly, I just... It's like, domestic violence is nothing to play with. And everybody loves that toxic... And like, I'm seeing it over and over. Everybody loves toxic shit. Every woman is loving this toxic shit until he hit your ass too hard. It's all fun and daddy. It's all fun and game till he bop your ass too hard. Now you missing the tooth. Oh, no more cute Instagram pictures. Now you didn't hit your ass too hard. Now you didn't blast your eye. Or, or hear me out. Now you didn't fuck your car if you can't get to work. And men love a good toxic woman. It's all fun and daddy till what? To, to, to what? You can't see your kids. Till she calling your job. She smearing your name on social media. Um, to she bleaching all your clothes, to y'all, to y'all, to it escalating to physical, physical stuff, and it's like everybody loves toxicity until they either did in jail, or or they they don't have shit left from it, and it's like you don't have to get that far. Like nobody, anybody saying everybody got a perfect love story. Nobody has a perfect love story. You know what I'm saying? Because you have to each, you know, what you want your love story to look like is just determined by each person. Nobody else can make your love story look the way you want. You have to make that, but. To sit out here and say that I want to get beat on, I want to get cussed out, I want to get smacked up, I want to be disrespected, I want to be ignored, dismissed, I want to my feelings to not be seen as valid. To say that that's the epitome of where you want to go just so that you could take cute ass pictures, matching pajamas for Christmas, you sound like a fucking clown and you need help. And I want you to know that nigga, that woman don't love you. They don't love you. And they need to seek fucking help. And if you got kids and you're, you guys are involved in these type of relationships and you're just letting it fly, like, y'all niggas need to seek help. And it's, and it's like, we like these things and we enjoy these things, but it's, it's like, it's all cool and dandy until our kids get involved, right? Like, we want our kids to be better than us and do better. We need to exemplify that. You want your little brother and your little sister. You don't want them to take the same path. Exemplify that. Be a better person. Do not... Do not, like, I hate to even, not say I hate to bring God into it, but what does the Bible say? Be in this world, not of the world. Like, be on social media, not of social media. Stop, stop entertaining that shit. 
that shit not good for you. It's not good for your health in a real sense. Like, it's not good for you mentally. It's not good for you physically. Emotionally, like, I don't know. What y'all think? What y'all got to say? I see everybody. What y'all think? What, what do y'all think about toxicity? Y'all think that... How do y'all think it's affecting the way people... I know we always talk about dating, but how do y'all think toxicity is affecting the way people view themselves? I think... I don't know. I think we might be seeing people do toxic shit just because they feel like that's how they got to keep a person. Or it might be affecting the way people have friendships. How they deal with each other. You ain't calling me so many times. You're not real. You don't text me. We don't do this. We're not real. I don't know. What y'all think? Mom, well, I'm waiting for y'all to... And while I'm waiting for you guys to drop that, make sure you guys hit this live and share it with three friends you think will love the conversation. Um, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay. There we go. So, yeah. I don't know. I think that... I think that is really affecting this people's perspective of themselves. I think that I don't see to toxicity. Is, pages like Justin LeBoy is only, I feel like they're only a business to promote negative ass behavior, negative ass habits. I don't see them, you know, posting no good shit. And, I'm, and it's like, I didn't expect everybody to do good shit. Like, that's just, let's be realistic. Negative shit just gets more reaction it gets more attraction and i can see that i don't expect everybody to be on positive shit want to make the world but i don't expect that but i also don't expect people to really be basing their lives off a of fucking me like y'all don't even know these fucking people and it's like like i said that should be making you seem like you the victim all the time and you the hero no bitch you the villain you fuck some shit up and it's just like Toxicity is really going to ruin y'all relationships. Y'all really out here thinking it's okay to be smacking people, to be dismissing people. And it's like, you don't even want to fucking be treated like that. Why is you thinking it's okay to treat somebody like that? Like, first off, and why do women want to be handled? What the fuck are y'all, zoo animals? Zoo, you want to be, you want somebody that can handle you? Somebody, a woman, if you were here, you want to, if you say that, you want to tell me what it means to be handled. I feel like that shit is like a pit bull on the leash. Like, you gotta control your dog. Like, you animal. Like, I'm a grown-ass woman. I have more than enough self-control and discipline to maintain myself. I don't need no grown-ass man trying to handle me. Bitch, I handle me. I got this. Like, I don't... You handle you, okay? I don't know. I don't know what... I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what that means to be handled. I don't want a grown man to handle me. And I hate when men be like, let me tell you some other shit. This is another toxic thing. Uh, what niggas be saying? You ain't gonna find another nigga like me. Ain't nobody gonna love you like me. Good bitch. I don't want you to. I don't want another you. That's the whole point of leaving this bullshit. Because if I get another you, then I obviously ain't learn my fucking lesson. Bitch, I don't want you. I don't want another you. I had a nigga to be like, this is the one that I've learned that is like, it's crazy because it's like me and Sadis and it used to be a big deal. And I was like, you realize like women are like, I think women are beating men in like top earnings and like women are biggest, uh, largest group of people with the small businesses. So it's like when a nigga be like, that's why you single. That's why you single now. And it's like, so maybe I don't want to date a nigga. Not to mention it's more women than men. So it really ain't that slim pickings. Like, yeah, I'm single. Partially by choice. Mostly by force. You know, a little you know, a little bit, a little bit. But it's like niggas be trying to manipulate you into thinking that you're hard to deal with because you won't deal with they bullshit. You won't you won't let me manipulate you and you won't let me mentally abuse you. So that's why you single, because you can't deal with a real man. That's the bullshit. Let me tell you what else is some toxic shit. A nigga talking about some I wanna if you, oh, let me tell you all, a man said this to me. This nigga told, let me tell you all, I've been me before I was me. This nigga told me, you a woman and I'm a man and you need to submit to me. This was not my boyfriend. I said, nigga, what? What? Tell, like, let me tell you all, that is another thing. Men are, excuse me, I need you to go park it. I need you to go park it. Yes, shh, go sit down. Mommy's working. Thank you. Men saying that women need to submit, you need to be submitting to men. That is a manipulative, that is a manipulation tactic. Let me make that very clear. No man, 
needs to be running around telling women you need to be submitting xyz not being a conversation that's different but if you don't know this woman and she's just um has a big personality and she's just who she is unapologetically and bold about her shit and you think you need to tone her down because you either too broke mentally financially or emotionally to be able to um keep up with her you don't need to be running around trying to tell a woman she needs to submit just because you can't keep the fuck up no that is toxic wig is running around you women need to submit you ain't nothing worth submitting to you ain't got shit to submit to you ain't got a, a pot to piss in and a window to throw it out bitch don't worry about who submits because ain't nobody submitting to you ain't nobody submitting to you okay you can't even lead shit you can't even lead yourself to get a fucking job but you want to talk about me submitting baby go about your business if you got some Please, because that's what niggas be, that is, that is something niggas been doing. This submissive thing, niggas are hung up on the submissive. Ain't got shit to submit to. Ain't got a pot to piss in and a window to throw it out of to lead you there so you can submit to them. They ain't got nothing but want you to submit. Boy, fuck you. Okay, in the dis most disrespectful time you can think of. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. And let me tell you this other toxicity. <sighs> I have to, I got to do both sides. Women, women and submitted. That's the other toxicity. Feeling like you don't, and I'm a, I ain't going to go into much details, but feeling like, and I'm going to say this because I feel like this is a very thin line. Women not feeling like they need to respect a man as a man because he don't look how your daddy look, how your uncles look. He ain't told a gun. Like, I'm going to say this and I'm going to say it loud and clear. Men do not, do, I don't see most men down to women for a nine to five, right? Don't be knocking no nigga with no regular job because he ain't toting a gun and selling drugs. That's just not it. So you are a disrespecting man. I don't want a nigga with a nine to five. Them niggas don't make enough money for me. And it's like, if money was the only thing keeping you, then you still be with your deadbeat abusive ass baby daddy. But that ain't even a fucking case. It ain't money, obviously, that's keeping you. Clearly, something else is more. So, quit trying to be toxic and promote this idea that you don't even full cold, like full heartedly believe in. Because if you did, you'd be with the nigga that was doing all that. But that ain't it. Because you know that money ain't everything. So, stop doing that shit. Women promoting, I don't want to fuck with no nigga with no nine to five. You want to fuck with them type of niggas? But all you do is get beat the fuck up and you, you and then you want this bitch crying about domestic violence? Pick one. Pick one. Stop promoting them ideas you don't believe in and down a man with a nine to five because if it was about money, you will be with your baby daddy. That nigga beating your ass, but he giving you bags. So which one? Stop doing it. Stop stop promoting that bullshit. Stop promoting that toxici toxicity on social media because you don't want your daughters doing that. Same thing with men. Stop doing all that. Stop, stop being the type of man you don't want your daughter to be. Your daughter to run into. Stop raising your sons to be these niggas and these shooters and gang and shit. But you don't want your daughters to run into them type of men. Because remember this. You cannot have it both ways. You cannot teach your daughters to try to protect themselves and value themselves and all these things. And at the same time raise a son that's out here saying, fuck women, get, fuck bitches, get men. You can't do both. Because you know what you're doing? You raise an exact type of man you do not want your daughter to run into. You can't have both ways. You need to pick a side. Do you want to raise good, decent people? Or do you want to raise niggas on the game? You got to pick one. Either way it go, if it's not going to positively affect them, you promote negativity and toxicity. Either way it go. Stop, stop, stop ignoring people's phone. I ain't, no, I ain't going to stop saying that. Learn how to communicate. A lot of this shit be miscommunications. Learn how to communicate. A lot of, and that's the one thing I do see. A lot of the toxicity that people be promoting, I'm a black him, he better call me from a bunch of different numbers. Um... It's communication. And, and let me tell you something. We can see a real decrease in this shit if we stop talking to these type of people. Stop, stop, stop doing all that. Bitch, don't block me. If we dating and you get mad, you need to communicate. Maybe you need a, a couple hours, maybe a day. Okay, cool. But bitch, don't block me. Because once you block me, it's up and it's stuck. Bitch, you done. I got another nigga. Ain't nobody waiting around. Nobody blowing your phone up. That shit childish. You need to say how you feel and we need to move the fuck past. And if you can't, then bitch, bye. It's as simple as that. Nobody's doing all that blocking you, calling you from different numbers. Bitch, who's doing that? Nobody has time for that. And stop tolerating that. You y'all gotta understand that the only shit, the shit that be happening is because we allow it to happen. Stop doing it. What else is some other forms of toxicity? I'm trying to think. I know it's that blocking people, expecting them to call, the art situation, pulling the gun out. Domestic violence and promoting it. Like, I need a nigga that's gonna slap me up a little bit. Don't put your fucking hands on me. Let me tell you, 
I, put your hands on me. Bitch, I'm going to get my lick back and then I'm going to call the police. Because once, once I do what I need to do, they can come do what they need to do. And bitch, I'm going to press full charges like I ain't did Nathan. I'm going to get, bitch, I'm going to get my lick back. You hit me, I'm going to get my lick back. And I'm going to make sure that by the time your mon they monkey asses get here to get you, you can't get up. Why? Why he on fire? I have no idea. I blacked that officer. I must have. I don't know. But I got my motherfucking lick back, bitch, and you're going to jail when I'm pressing charges. So, <laughs> don't do it. Keep, here we go. Keep your hands to your motherfucking self. Don't put your hands on nobody else's child, okay? If then nobody hit you, you don't hit them. That's to all the girls that can't keep their hands to their hitting their man. Okay? Because if he bop your ass back or on self-defense tip, I might look the other way. I probably is because I feel like you need to keep your hands to yourself. Fellas, keep your hands to yourself. I don't give a fuck how much hatred you got in your heart for your mama. How many times you saw your daddy smack bitches? I don't care. Keep your fucking hands to yourself. Because if she put four hot ones in your ass, then you ain't going to have nothing to say. And your mama going to be crying that my baby was a good, I, good baby. Fuck your baby. So keep your hands to yourself, okay? Learn how to communicate. It's not enough to, to just say you want to do. It's not enough to just be promoting, posting, sharing shit. Say how you feel. And let me tell y'all, I felt some type of way. It's not an explanation of how you felt. I was disappointed in your actions. I didn't like when you said X, Y, Z. Those are proper ways to say how you feel. I felt some type of way was not a response. Assuming that people know how you feel is also not a proper response. Okay? That's not going to work. You need to communicate. I'm trying to think of what else is toxic. Um, Y'all, my views are so limited. I really be trying to like stay out of that shit. So I, I be really like, to, like Ray Charles to the bullshit. I just really don't try to fuck around with it because it's not healthy. Like I don't want those type of behaviors. I feel like that was shit I did in my early 20s. Ignoring niggas, phone calls, blocking niggas, um, stalking people. Let them people go. Go about your day. Um, toxicity? Let me tell you. The last bitch I saw really do some toxic shit, that girl that set, set that man Jeep on fire and then blew the fuck up. Y'all remember that video? Do any, comment below. Do y'all remember that video that happened like, I think like during the pandemic or so, that girl was setting that man Jeep on fire and she blew the fuck up and she blew back and then she ran? If y'all remember that video, let me know. That's some toxic shit. Quit destroying people's property. Because if somebody came back and shot your fucking house up, then it'd be a problem. Stop touching people's shit. Okay? Stop touching people's shit. Keep your hands to yourself. Don't touch shit that don't belong to y'all. I got the, the, excuse me. Can you get off the door? Get off the door, please. Sorry. Um, you know, that's another thing. I feel like I, we got to go back over the golden rules from elementary school. Keep your hands to yourself. Work on some self-control. Okay? Don't touch shit that don't belong to you. Leave. I don't know why y'all just don't leave these motherfuckers. Love is strong. Yes, it is, baby, but it will die. Leave people the fuck alone. Good or leave a nigga alone. Leave her crazy ass alone because it's all good and dandy till somebody die. Now your people on here crying. They mad at her. Now we got to bury niggas. Let's leave these motherfuckers alone. Get the fuck out. It's too many motherfuckers in the world to be sitting out here stupid, stuck on stupid because it's dodo brain. Get the fuck, leave them niggas alone. Get the fuck away from them, okay? That's what I came on here to tell y'all. Y'all out here romanticizing this toxicity. And let me tell you where you're going to end up. You're going to end up scarred for life, dead as fuck, or in jail for some bullshit. Leave them people the fuck alone. Get the fuck on. Leave them, okay? Fuck them. It's too many people in the world for you to be tripping about one dodo brain ass motherfucker. Fuck them people, okay? Fuck them people. Fuck them, all right? Um, that's all I got. Y'all got anything y'all want to add? Um, yeah, I just feel like, I don't know. I really, you know, lately, I, I know I've been mentioning a lot about the youth, but I feel like lately the youth has really been on my mind and the stuff that we're promoting, which is why I made my show the way it is. Like, I don't want to be talking about bullshit on this show because I know there are youth that watch the show, that watch my replays, that comment on shit that I do. And it's like, 
it's so much bullshit. We don't need to. I don't need to also be adding to the bullshit. I want to add to the good shit. The shit that gets you to think. The shit that make you want to be a better person. It's enough dumb shit going around. And it's like we got to start thinking about not just ourselves and our own children. But the children outside our children that watches your little brothers, your little sisters, your nieces and your nephews. You know. And it's like we. You like. It just makes me want to always be doing the fucking right thing. Or what I deem is the right thing. That's my ability. Like. We just got to do better, man. The youth is dependent on us. and Excuse me. The youth is dependent on us, and we just got to do a better job of showing them the right way. I feel like, you know, I don't know where me and my friend were talking. I was like, yeah, maybe. I feel like we have really strong images of black love. Like, you see my shirt say black love. Excuse me. Stop. Um, I feel like we had really strong images of black love. We had my wife and kids. We had Martin and Gina. We had the Cosbys. Um... I'm sure I missed some. Um, we had a lot of good black love. And it's like, I don't know if they have those images to promote what healthy black love looks like. Blackish is a good one, though. Somebody says toxic energy comes from internal fear, uncertainty. That too. No, it's cool. I, I got it. Um, yeah. And I think sometimes it's learned behavior. People just be doing other shit that they see people do and picking it up. And then don't nobody want, you know, like that shit. Is, and it's like, it's kind of normalized. So people think it's cool and it's okay. And they want to do it. And it's like, that shit not okay. And it's like, but they young. And it's like, that's why it's like, I want to involve more young people that are on the right path. Like, don't be doing that shit. You know? It's like, I feel like so often, so many times on my Facebook, I see a couple pictures. This is what, I, this is why I really hate seeing couple pictures when they start getting shared. Because I feel like when they start getting shared, it's because the man done killed the girl. And it's like, they be sticking and stand with these niggas getting their ass beat because they think that shit love. Girl, bye. And they got out. And I, and, I, and I can't, I can't say what happens because I've never been in that situation. But nigga got one time, okay? One motherfucking time to, bitch, what? Put your hands on me. You smack me. Bitch, I'm getting my leg back and you're going to jail. And it's up and it's stuck from there. I ain't never fuck with you no more. You can't never come back from that. And it's like, I wish women just had that that much respect for themselves. Like, my mama came whoop me. Mama, I couldn't get a whooping at that certain time. You think I'm about to let some random ass nigga be whooping on me? Bitch, I'm, we about to fight. We about to fight. And then you're going to jail. That's it. That's it. That's the end of it. I ain't going back and forth with you. You know, so. I just, I don't know. I, and it's like, I hate that Justin LaBoy. And it's like, y'all know I'm big on black people. I don't be really giving a fuck about that many other people because they ain't got shit to do with us. They got their own problems. Um, and so it's like, Justin, I'm sure everybody looks at the Justin LaBoy page, but I be feeling like it really be catering to black culture. And it's like, it's just feeding us. That's just another strong, growing platform that's feeding this bullshit, you know? And I again, I feel like that everybody, every different race probably looks at that page, but... Some of that shit be looking like it be tailored for niggas. And it's like, ugh, more bullshit. They feed you bullshit day in, day out. But the good shit, the healthy shit, it's like, it's not even few far in between. It's just, it's not being promoted because they don't want you on that. And it's like, that's why, that's why I be so mad. Like, we don't have that good, soulful R&B. It's like, they just be feeding y'all a bunch of garbage ass shit. Through rap music, putting a dope ass beat on it. It might have a straight message, but niggas ain't listening to the message. It's just like, fuck, like, we need more, more black love. Like, mental health is a thing, but I feel like that shit's still a joke a little bit. Um, and it's just like, I wanna see more healthiness, more positivity. We gotta do better, not only just for ourselves and our kids, but because of the youth. Like, I want us to be better for the kids coming behind us. Somehow, some way, you gotta do better for them. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and wrap this tonight's episode up. Before I get up out of here, I need you guys to drop one thing you're grateful for. Just one person drop something in the comment section that you're grateful for. Um, I'm going to go out the same way I came in with something I'm grateful for. Um, and I'm going to say I am grateful tonight for my unintended, un unintended, I was going to say unintended, unintended co-host. Um, because you know, everything's not perfect. You always got a lot of improvise and it's like, he hasn't bust in what well, he busted in last time, but it was a little more control. Um, so I'm grateful for my unintended co-host because you still got a lot of work through the bullshit. Um, so yeah, I'm super grateful for that. Um, and we're back next week. I haven't decided what I'm gonna do next week. Um, but I did want to use this opportunity to give you guys, some um, um, some updates. I will be changing the name of the show. 
I'm still working on the name of it. So if you guys got any suggestions, make sure you hit my inbox with suggestions for new names of the show. Um, I know you guys, a lot of you guys really love when I do interviews. And I know I kind of just suddenly made changes because I really like hated doing interviews. I was just like interviewed the fuck out, right? It was really stressful, the whole process. So um, I want to let you guys know, probably start, I think it's starting next month. I'll be bringing back at least an interview once per month. So we'll definitely be uh, doing that again. Um, he said, why are you changing the name? Uh, SEO, SEO is search engine optimization because let's talk. The show is so common. Like there's so many things that are, that say like, let's talk on YouTube. It's so hard to find the show. Like you really would have to look up. This ain't a podcast. I think you have to use that on YouTube directly. Click the link or I think I know some people were certain, like people were looking for the show and they were searching the Sherelle show. And I'm like, what the fuck? And I'm like, well, damn, maybe that's a good name. So it was really about visibility um, because let's talk is so common. Every people say that all day. Let's talk about this. Let's talk this. So it pops up so often that there's nothing really distinguishing about my my the name, right? So is yeah, it's really just about visibility on you know platforms across the board. Um, but if you guys have any other names that you wanna that you think would be a good fit, the Sherelle show um, was something I was thinking of. I also really thought about just changing to uh, this ain't a podcast. Hey, what's up? I, it would be like, hey, what's up, everybody? It's your girl Sherelle, and I'm the host of this ain't a podcast. Like I really was thinking like that. Everybody knows that this ain't a podcast is super like super distinguishable. Um, it'll be T A A P, which would be the acronym. This ain't a podcast. I feel like that's super simple. It still embodies what this show is because it is a talk show. It's not a podcast. Um, and so I feel like it really would stick true to who I am, what I really love about the show and still maintain a part of that original part of the show. It would just be this ain't a podcast. Anymore. So, um, but I've also thought of the Sherelle show. I really didn't want to put my name in it. Um, yeah. The Sherelle Show. I don't know. I don't know if that just has a ring to it. But if you guys have any ideas for the show, please drop them in my inbox. I want you guys to keep... Um, I want you guys to put your input in because I can't do the show without you. So drop your inputs and your suggestions in my uh, DM, please. It doesn't matter. Any time of day, be like, hey, I got a, I thought of a suggestion for the show name. Um, so, yeah. Maybe I'll... Whoever gives me the best name, maybe we'll work something out. I don't know. Maybe we'll do an interview or something. Um, but yeah, so expect interviews coming back starting in February. Once a month, I'll have an interview with someone once a month. Um, sometime this year, I'm still working on getting a new name for the show. Um, yeah, and I think that's about it. Our two year anniversary is like, oh, I missed it. I was, I'm a week late, but our two year anniversary is coming up. You guys, we've been doing this for two years. Y'all been rocking with me for two years. Um, and I haven't decided what I'm going to do for it yet. Um, yeah, so, I don't know. COVID, I really kind of wanted to do, like, a party or something and invite, like, guests. But I ain't decided yet. But, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up tonight's show. Thank you so much. Um, I'm grateful for my unintended guest tonight. I'm grateful for my beautiful audience members. I love you guys. I thank you guys so much. This show would not be what it is without you. Um, like, I, I know that sometimes, like, my friends are like, are you going to do your show, like, after something major happens? And I'm like, yeah, I told them I'm coming, so I'm coming. Um, so, please know, I always keep you guys in mind. I always feel obligated to show the fuck up, regardless of how I'm feeling. I just feel like I know they're counting on me. I know that people have inboxed me like, hey, you know, what's going on and stuff. So, it's like, I always feel obligated to show up to you guys. I always feel like I owe you guys an explanation if I don't show up. So, don't ever think that I don't think about you, that I, that this is just a show, something I do for fun. No, this is my passion and I love you guys and I'm thankful for you guys and I know that I'm obligated and indebted to you guys. Um, but, yes, yeah, so I always think about you. So, Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. Um, thank you guys for tuning in this Tuesday like you guys do every Tuesday. I'm super grateful for you. Um, but that's all I got tonight, you guys. My name is Cheryl Carter. I'm the host of Let's Talk the Show. And this ain't a podcast. I'll see you guys next Tuesday.